What's up guys? All right, um, got a video of this one from the get-go because I've been really bad at not starting my videos when I need to. Uh, this one's a deal, you know. A uh, friend called me up, bought a new car. This thing's been sitting in his driveway for five years. I got it towed home and now I got to get it in my driveway. So it's a 2003 Dodge Stratus RT. It's got the three liter Mitsubishi V6 in it, timing belt engine. Um, looked it over a little bit so far. It had a dead battery. Luckily it was still under warranty at our local O'Reilly's. So I went and got a new battery for it. Um, the car's decent. It's got some dents, some dings. It's been sitting. The paint's a little chippy. The interior is decent, you know. Pretty good car, really. Um, buddy of mine, it was his 16th birthday. First car, he's had it forever. Bought a truck, stopped driving the car, it sat. As far as I can tell so far, I'm not getting fuel pumps. So um, I looked in the, he even gave me a service manual with it. The guy's great. Thanks, Alan. Um, so. Anyways, uh, what I'm trying to do now is just to get it started. I want to get it started and get it pulled in the driveway or get it pulled in front of my house. It's currently in front of my neighbor's house. and They're always cool about me and my cars, but uh, I don't want to push my luck. So um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to try and see if I can bang on the fuel pump and get it to come back to life. So I'll show you guys where I'm at so far. So this car is cool. Japanese, well, Jap Jap American car. Um, so, one second here where I climb in here. Part of the camera. <sighs> Two doors. Let me tell you about it. Okay, so this car is pretty cool. It's got a fuel pump right here under the drive back seat. So, no, no tools required to get to the fuel pump, which is pretty sweet. So, I'm going to take this cover off here. And I'm going to give a swift whack, whack, whack to the fuel pump. And I'm going to hit the key and see if I can hear some noise. Because when I hit the key, I hear some relays under the hood clicking. But I got nothing going on back here. I also, uh, with my current track record of junk cars, seems like I've been getting a lot of cars with mice wiring damage. Which is weird, because I've really never had a problem with that previously. But recently, the last few cars I've gotten have just been mice destroyed. So, gosh darn it, one-handed. Um, so, I'm really hoping that a fuel pump... We'll get this guy back running again. Um, this is going to be a quick flip. I have no intentions of keeping this car. Um, I just, basically my friend called me and said, hey, I bought a new car. I need this thing out of my driveway. And I said, okay. And he threw me a number on it. And I said, okay, well, I mean, fair enough. If I can't get it running, then uh, I can scrap it. And um, we'll, we'll be about even. So um, I figured it's worth it. Uh, I apologize for not doing any videos other than the Ram Charger walk around lately. Um, if you guys didn't watch that video or read the comments, Ram Charger's gone. I sold it. Um, I know none of you actually care but me, but I did. It's gone. So um, we've got the van project coming up soon, the van life project. I've got my 92 Dodge B250 that we're going to do the whole camper thing on. It's going to be really fun. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let's see. Okay, so we've got two connectors. Let's try. Let's see if we can slide this guy into here. Yeah, pull it out of the way a little bit. Let's see if we can just... Give her a wacky. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I just banged on it a little bit with a hammer. I'm gonna hit the key and see if I hear a noise. Okay, you guys can talk about my camera skills all you want. This video sucks. Anyways, we moved it. It's running. So I went to O'Reilly's. Okay, we'll start from the beginning. Last time I talked to you guys, I just put the battery in it. Crank, no start, right? Okay, so I went to the back. I put my hand on the fuel pump. As you guys saw me take the cover off, it didn't feel like it was doing anything, right? Okay, so I went ahead and went to O'Reilly's and got a fuel pump, okay? So, got a fuel pump, got a strainer, I was going to pull the ascending unit out. Well, I got the connectors off, I got the wires off. 
um, and I was having a little hang up on one of the connectors trying to get it off, right? So I start to pull the high pressure hose off and it had pressure in it. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. This car has been sitting for five years. I haven't heard the fuel pump prime. How does it still have pressure in it? So I came up to the front and I tapped on this here regulator right there. Smacked it a couple of times. Popped in the car, cranked it up, fire, fire we are. So uh, it's, this thing hasn't run in five years. So I'm just letting it sit here and run. Um, I did notice from a visual inspection, the uh, timing belts probably pretty close to needing to be replaced on this thing. Um, on the outside, it sounds good. Inside, it doesn't sound awesome. I mean, it feels like either the motor mounts are bad or it's misfiring or a combination thereof. Um, I mean, I would assume. I don't know where the OBD port is on this thing. Uh, so we're running, uh, we have a check engine light on, but I'm gonna plug in and see if I can read it real quick. Um, let me click back on here with the OBD scanner. We'll see what she says. All right, guys, just one short minute back. We are back. So, found the OBD port, we're linking. Let's see what she says. So, I mean, it felt to me like it was misfiring a little bit, but I mean, exhaust gas for circulation control circuit. Okay, don't really care about that. Pardon me. EGR. Generator field terminal. That sounds like a low battery thing. Injector six open. Injector four open. Injector two open. Hmm. Let's try clearing these. I mean, who knows how many of these codes are still here. They are working on something, didn't plug something back in. You never know. We just got this card. Interesting. One week later, returning to the scene of the crime. Okay, here's the scoop. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. We got the car going. I drove it around a little bit. I determined the alternator is no good. That was where that generator open field code came from. I also realized that I'm a dummy and didn't realize that I was throwing my own fuel injector codes because I was unplugging them and when I got it running because I thought it was misfiring. None of this is really important, but uh, I have kind of run into a problem. So. The car runs, it drives, the air conditioner works, it's got a stereo. It doesn't look terrible in my opinion. It may not be your favorite car, but you know, if you need something to drive, I wouldn't be embarrassed to drive this car by any means. Um, I, I personally kind of like it, but you know, whatever. There's a butt for every, every seat, so. Here's the problem. This thing needs tires. It needs an alternator, which it's getting. It's getting the alternator no matter what, but it needs tires. It's got flat spots on all the tires because it's sat in the same spot for a long time. It, in my opinion, needs a timing belt because, you know, it's been sitting for a long time. That would be definitely a safety concern if you were going to want to drive this thing on the highway or put a lot of miles on it. Um, you know, that's one of those things that you can't really answer the question like someone say, well, how long do you think it'll last? I have no idea. It could make it home or it could make it for five more years. I can't tell you how long the rubber has deteriorated. I don't know. I'm not that guy. There's certain questions you can't answer. So basically what I'm down to now is... This thing essentially needs more work than it's worth, but it works the way it is. So do we do A, put a set of used tires on it, put some brakes on it, do a timing belt, and try and see if we can get our money back? Or do we B, put the alternator on it, because we've already got it coming, and that's the one thing that makes it where it won't start and go every time, fix that and then pedal it down the road to somebody else that can put used tires and eventually do a timing belt on it. 
I'm a little torn because it's not that I don't want to do the work, but I don't want to do the work for free. So if I'm not going to be able to make any money off of the several hours of labor it's going to take me to do all this stuff, then at that point, it's not worth it for me to do. So I'm coming to you with this question. Do you do it for the love? Or do you do it for the money? I'd like to say a little bit of both for me. Um, anybody that knows my car flipping habits knows that I definitely don't make a whole lot of money off of it. Um, I don't not make any money off of it, but it's definitely not uh, supplemental enough income to quit my job or anything like that. So uh, it's just one of those things where I'm going to come to you with a question. I think I'm going to come up with my own solution as well. Um, but I'm curious of your input. So leave a comment at the bottom and tell me what you think. Do we do a timing belt, sh full detail, shine up the headlights, put some used tires on it, service the whole thing and try and see if we can find somebody else out there that just happens to be a Dodge Stratus RT lover? Or do we just do this next repair, finish the uh, cleanup? I'm not gonna call it a detail. So we'll vacuum it. We'll get the stains out of the interior, but we may not polish the headlights or, you know, do the full thing. What do you guys think? I'm not really sure. Also, hit me up in the comments if you're looking for a car and you just got a couple bucks. I'd be down to work on it with you. I would be down to cut you a sweet deal. This car's got a clean Oklahoma title. It's got a brand new battery. And uh, I mean, it does run and drive. If you just live down the street from your work and you just need something to get you there and you don't really care if it only lasts you a little bit, this would be perfect. Or if you're down to spend a little bit more and um, say, come hang out with me when we put a timing belt on it or uh you know maybe take some advice about some uh preventative maintenance that might get it to last longer for you it could potentially be a good car for you for quite a while ironically this car has the second lowest miles of any car i have that has 250 that's not my car but it's uh, my girlfriend's old car it has 500,000. the forerunner 170 just a couple more, but still more. The truck is the only thing lower. The uh, white truck's got 75,000 miles on it, but you know, that doesn't really count. The uh, Mercedes that you can't see has the odometer stopped at 250. So you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, maybe, yeah, this may not be a 5.2 Jeep, or it may not be a Toyota, or it may not be a diesel Mercedes, but 150,000 miles isn't really that high. Just saying. So um, let's get some feedback. You guys, um, need a car do you want to see me fix it for fun what do you want to see i mean the whole point of this is just to be able to share with people working on things and uh achieving goals and unfortunately the getting it running goal just sort of happened and i can't really explain exactly what happened something between resetting the fuel injection computer clearing the pressure out of the line and knocking on the regulator was what got it to start for me but i'm not sure if it was a relay issue i i you know I'm not going to act like I'm magic, guys. I don't know every single thing. So um, I don't know. But I, what I do know is it builds proper fuel pressure and it runs pretty good now. Um, and I think it will run good for a while if someone starts driving it. But guys, I've got seven cars, man. Like I don't, I can't, I can't take every single one completely to the finish line. So what should we do with it? Let's get some feedback. Um, as always, uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning into these videos and checking out what I got to, what I got to say. Um, I'm going to have the alternator for it in a couple days and I'm going to do that. Um, I'm probably going to come back on that video if I get any feedback and see what the next step is going to be. But for sure, alternator's going in it, a little bit more cleaning, and then it's either going to go or uh, we're going to do some more work to it. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure and comment. Make sure and like the video. Tell your friends. Um, subscribe to the channel, Chris Basil Builds, and uh, we'll see you soon.